students and thank you so much for joining me today. So um, this video continues our module two discussion of the research process. And in this video, I'm going to talk about our last research methodology, which is quasi experiments. Okay, so in my last video where I was talking about correlations, I mentioned that there are unique situations in which it would not be appropriate or ethical to conduct an experiment, right? So we can't uh, randomly assign our participants to one gender uh, or another, right? And we can't randomly assign our participants to uh, experience something dangerous, right? So we can't randomly assign uh, participants to uh, a, a radiation condition versus no radiation or something like that, right? Um, so there are many situations where we're either unable to manipulate a particular variable because it's not possible, or we're unable to manipulate a particular variable because it would be uh, very, very unethical to do so, right? So one way we can get around that problem um, is to conduct a correlational study, but another way we can get around that problem is by conducting a quasi-experiment, okay? So a quasi-experiment is simply an, a research design that does not use random assignment, okay, and is therefore not a true experiment, right? Because a true experiment always utilizes random assignment, okay? So in the case of quasi-experimental uh, designs, everything else is pretty much identical to uh, an experiment, right? So we have uh, an independent variable and a dependent variable, okay? Um, the only difference is that our, our independent variable is called a quasi-independent variable because the researcher doesn't actually manipulate them, okay? So let me give you some examples, right? So going back to one of the Dr. Stokes experiments that I talked about, um, let's say we were interested in determining whether one gender is characteristically happier than the other, right? So we would come up with some way of operationally defining happiness, which would be our dependent variable. So maybe we would develop some kind of happiness questionnaire I'm actually pretty sure that exists. I'm just not familiar with, with how that's typically measured, right? But let's say we know that information. So we have our happiness questionnaire that's going to serve as our dependent variable, okay? And in this case, our quasi-independent variable is going to be, uh, for example, uh, let's say males versus females. Okay, but instead of taking our list of participants and randomly assigning them to a male or female condition, okay, that's already already decided, right? So we recruit for participation, for example, um, 20 females and 20 males, okay? Um, so we have two groups, two experimental groups, um, but the participants were self self-selected, right, already. Uh, similarly, if we were interested in investigating tobacco use and its influence or effect on health outcomes, okay, maybe our dependent variable would be uh, the presence of, of lung cancer after 20 years. Or, or maybe we would look at a, uh, expiratory volume of the lungs, okay? Or maybe we would just look at uh, um, exercise or physical stamina uh, um, among our participants, right? So all of those things would be good dependent variables, but again, it wouldn't be ethical to manipulate, for example, one group of participants 
is randomly assigned to smoke five packs a day for 10 years. And another group of participants is designed is randomly assigned to not smoke, right? That wouldn't be ethical given the deleterious health consequences that we know of uh, surrounding tobacco use, right? So instead, we have to go into our population and find people who already smoke, okay? And compare them to people who do not smoke. Okay, so it, it serves as very similar to um, an independent variable in that we have a control group and an experimental group, but the main difference is that we are not choosing or randomly assign, or we are not randomly assigning these, these folks. Okay, lastly, if we were interested, for example, uh, in my last video, I talked about the effect of uh, or the potential relationship between trauma and violence, right? So if we wanted to look at this experimentally or quasi-experimentally, um, we might uh, look at the number of violent behaviors of school children on the playground, right? But we couldn't randomly assign some of those children to experience trauma and other children not to experience trauma. Obviously, trauma is is a significant uh, uh, significant obstacle or significant um, something that can um, have a profound negative influence on someone. Um, so it wouldn't be ethical to force uh, these children to experience trauma for the purpose of research, right? So just like we did with the other quasi-IVs, we would instead look for children who had already experienced trauma, okay, and compare them to children with no trauma history, okay? Um, so again, the key difference with quasi-experimental designs is there's no random assignment. We have to find populations that already meet a pre-existing criteria, right? So we find males and females, we find smokers and non-smokers, we find children with trauma histories and children without trauma histories, and compare these groups on whatever our, our dependent variable is, right? So obviously, uh, we're somewhat limited uh, um, because we didn't uh, u utilize random assignment, right? Um, so, for example, it is entirely possible because we didn't use random assignment that our groups are going to differ in additional ways or our samples are going to differ in additional ways besides what we've selected, right? So maybe our participants differ in more ways than, uh, than gender, Okay, just by chance from our selection, there might be pre-existing differences between them. Uh, and the same with smokers and non-smokers and people with trauma, right? So the problem with, or the benefit of quasi-experimental designs is they allow us to investigate things that we can't manipulate. But the drawback is that our, our ability to make assumptions about causality is limited um, because of the potential for individual difference confounds, because we didn't utilize random assignment. Okay, so I wanted to keep this video reasonably short, so I won't go on and on. Um, but certainly, if you have any questions, please don't hesitate to contact me. Um, and I look forward to seeing you in my next video.